This is actually based on a question that is in the exercise but I did not assign. At least I don't think I did. I didn't intend to because I wanted to show you now. Okay. Have a look. Pascal's triangle. I have highlighted two of the numbers in Pascal's triangle. Uh, somewhat it appears at random at the moment. Now, humor me please. One plus three. What's it equal to? Cool. That's good. <laughs> so far so good. Alright. Now, this time, I've just moved it down a little bit. Three plus six? Nine. Ten plus six? And then... And then... And do you need me to keep going? Okay. So... Mystery pattern. Right? Now, here's the thing, right? Now that we know because of our definition for what NCR is, which can we remember? NCR, what's it equal to again? N factorial. factorial on? R factorial. R Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Said with true passion and conviction. Okay. Shh. Since we know this, we've now been able to take advantage of that to notice why the patterns, or at least some of the patterns, in Pascal's triangles are what they are. For instance, the one we looked at last time, I think, was these um, prime rows of Pascal's triangles. Right? And we're like, they do a weird thing, and we worked out why they did a weird thing based on this definition. Okay? So, this pattern I just showed you of um, these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, and so on, right? I should be able to work out why they do that through this mechanism. I want you to think about it. Let me rewind a little bit. I started all the way up here. Okay? And then what I did was I migrated down in a diagonal like this. So I want you to think. I want you to think. What is it that binds all of these pairs of numbers together? How would you describe them? They're all term two. They are all term two. Because remember, this is term zero then term 1, then term 2. So this is also 0, then 1, then 2, which makes all the other ones, right? Time, item 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and so on. Yes? Okay, good. This is where we're going to start. So I can say there are two terms I'm adding. They're both something C2 plus something else C2. Yes? Yeah. Now, the thing that we notice, which is cool, is you can do this in any row you like, right? All the way down. So I can say the nth row, but then the next number down is going to be in the n plus 1th row. Okay? These are the two objects, and we notice every time they're a square number. So I'm going to pause there for a moment and say with this, what could you do to prove, not just observe and say, huh, that's cool, but to prove that this must be the case that you always get a square number. I'm going to leave you with this as a start. See how far you can get. Off you go. This is a proved question. You're trying to demonstrate that this thing always gives you some kind of square. But you don't know much about that square, though I should point out with Pascal's triangle in front of you, you can actually work out what square you get every single time as you proceed down. And you can work out what you're supposed to get on the right hand side so you know where you're going. But in case you're still floundering a little bit, let me help you out. The first step has to be to translate this, which is just shorthand really, for what it really is, all this factorial stuff. Okay? So help me do the left hand side and convert it into factorial notation. Can you just help and me do that? Okay, so n factorial on 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial. Cool. So that's a good start. Then you've got another binomial coefficient, but it's not on the nth row. It's on the n plus 1th row, right? n plus 1st? <laughs> n plus 1th, I think. Anyway, so therefore on the numerator you've got n plus 1 factorial. Cool. Denominator? Uh, 2. Now, at this point, you just got to be careful, right? This number is this take away this, right? This take away this. So therefore, this will be this take away this. n plus 1 
take away two, right? So that's going to why it's going to be n minus one. Cool. Okay, just be watch it. Watch out for your pluses and minuses and numbers that increment like that. Okay. Now remember, I'm expecting something that is square. So I'm just going to cross my fingers and start to simplify out and see what emerges. When you have a look at this, this is a literally a textbook unroll the factorial question, isn't it? What would you just do with this? You can unroll the n minus one. You can unroll this guy, right? This has more terms in it than this. It has exactly two more terms in it, right? What are those two terms? There's going to be an n, and then there's going to be n minus one, right? Now after that, it's n minus two factorial, but I'm not even going to write that. You're starting to get a little more comfortable with this. I'm just going to cancel it straight away. Are you okay with that? You see what I've done? The n minus two factorial that I would have written here has cancelled with the one in the denominator. I mean, I, I can write n minus two factorial twice if I want, so it was there, but the whole point of writing it is to cancel it. So I'm just gonna go straight there. Are you comfortable with that? Is that okay? I can do the same thing on the other fraction, yeah? Is the two going to be factorial or just two? Ah, good question. In this case, and I admit it's uh, only for this case, uh, Actually, no, it's not, it's not just this case. For one, it's the same too. Uh, two factorial, of course, is two times one, which is two. So in this case, I can just, yeah. So it's not like the factorial disappeared. I actually evaluated it. Does that make sense? Same thing with one, and that's it. <laughs> Every other number is something different. Okay, on the right-hand side, uh, or on the right-hand fraction, rather, I can do the same thing here. Do you notice this has exactly two more terms in it then this, what are the two terms? N, n, plus one. n plus one, and then n, okay? Now if I were to write the rest of this, it would then be n minus one factorial. But the whole point of me unrolling it is to cancel with this guy. So I'm not gonna write it, I'm just gonna cancel it right away. Okay, you right? And, and I also evaluate this two factorial. Okay, I'm almost there. I've already got the common denominator, that's convenient. So I've got n squared minus n over there, and then I've got n squared plus n over there. Do you agree? All over two. Uh, this is gonna cancel with this. That leaves me with two n squared on two, which lo and behold, had better always be a square number, okay? So you can see when you're willing to look at the machinery of this, right? The magic of Pascal's triangle, it's not magic. There's actually a quote uh, from this famous Indian mathematician, and he said, you know, things are magic until you understand them, and then they're mathematics. 